half the money and we put in the remainder. Correct. TBA and the TDOT look TBA and the TDOT. And uh, Joe, I don't know if you want to go too much into the finances of it, but we had initially had a fairly conservative construction estimate that we went into with this thing using typical TDOT unit pricing numbers. But we got very favorable bid results due to some good competition that just happened to be out all the time. We had some good local contractors and we had some people from outside of the area that come in and make some bids. And so the contractor that we did get glass machinery and excavating is a whole excellent. Here you go, here's the video. We put this together for our, I believe it's the TDOT presentation that we gave for their portion of the grant funding. Anyway, back to the funding as we did get favorable bid results. And so that's that's great to the city. You guys can use that many for other things, of course. And that makes us feel good, too, that our estimate has been on the conservative side. But it, as an engineer, it's a lot better to be on that side of the game than the other side of the game, I can tell you. The, like I said before, the intention is to have a one million square foot facility or something of that nature on this side. Of course, it could be also broken up into multiple use sites for various other facilities as well. So it really opens up a lot of opportunity for the city and for him kind of that 81 corridor or something that's really popular. I'll let this play through. If anybody has any more specific site 12 questions, I'd be glad to answer them. We're also going to have a period of end where we can answer more questions about these. But um, if anybody has any, <coughs> thank you for getting that video ready. Jason, I will report that uh, this week we happen to have someone from the uh, state economic development team pass through town, and uh, we suggest that they go go by and look at the site. And she was floored. Uh, she's ready to list it. She's ready to begin showing it to prospects. Yeah, it's going to look amazing. It's really is. It's one thing to look at it, renderings and plan sets, but to go out there and see the sheer size of this thing is a sight to behold. It really is. For me, anyway, it feels like a little miniature modern marble. Right, next, we're going to talk about Central Church Road, which, of course, intersects Andrew Johnson Highway there. This project was identified due to a couple of different reasons. We have a new fire station built there. Also, have some developments along there. Oh, well. the glass it has glass glass glass. Glass. You got <laughs> the growing in this area. You have some other residential different businesses along this area and we do some growth in that area. So we were tasked off with this project to come up with a solution for this intersection to better facilitate movement for the fire department, movement for the residents that live there, movement for business traffic. If that might, what we've come up with is a uh, next slide. What we came up with initially was kind of four different options here that we looked at. We worked closely with the city to come up with what we feel like is the most economical, the least, the least amount of impact for the community as far as inconveniences and provide the best dollar value moving forward for the solution. We have preliminary plans that we have, I believe, just up here earlier this week and discussed with the staff of the city. And they had a really good discussion there. We've got plans finalized from that discussion, submitted to TDOT for review. Our folks have also completed what we refer to as the NEPA documents, which for this conversation is we refer to as environmental documents have been submitted. There was also uh, the design completion on this one is expected in October 2021. I know that seems like a long time out. The main reason for that being is it just takes a while to get through right away processes and construction plans through the DDoS process. We will definitely do our part to move these projects that we're working on currently through as quickly as possible. Expected construction, we expect that following spring we have to be able to bid back with the construction documents and go right into a construction season in spring. Another similar project that we're working on in the same general area along Andrew Johnson, what we call the multi multi project, or internally we call the sidewalk project. And that's exactly what this is. This is to provide an AD 
create a blind sidewalk from one end of the project to the next, which as everybody that's driven down Andrew Johnson right now, it's pretty well a good patchwork of sidewalks that have been constructed over the years that have been tied together well. But there are some areas where you have cross slopes, driveway connections that we're crossing, just regular intersection crossings, areas like that, that do not meet ADA requirements. And so we are going through and constructing approximately one mile of new sidewalk where there was none down by where Merchant's Green and Walmart is, up to replacing and improving sidewalks down the rest of that way up to Sunset Hill Street. We've got another section that we're looking at over there, around Colorado Square Mall, similar, we're improving that area as well. The initial estimates for that, <coughs> the project is around, we're, we're hoping around 800,000, like I said, we're uh, in preliminary right now, and that's what it's kind of looking like. We're looking at that around eight hundred thousand dollars for that project. You'll see very similar bullet points on this one as we saw with the Central Church Road project, and that is due to the we are working these at the same time. We have the same design team working on both projects. It's working out very well for us, and being able to keep the synergy between design team, city staff, and, and all that. So we intend to have this one ready, design completed by October 2021, with construction starting spring 2022 as well. Does anybody have any questions on those two particular projects? Like I said, at the end, we'll have another time to talk. The last one I will be talking about today, I'm sure the delight that the council member got at the end, is the Liberty Hill Road and Andrew Johnson Highway Intersection Alternative Study. This is just adjacent to that intersection, as you can see there, to left Liberty Hill and Andrew Johnson. The why of this project was traffic. We have people trying to take a left off to Andrew Johnson in either direction and into the businesses to go to church over in this area. And during certain peak times of day, traffic is piling up in that left lane, and that is a hazard anytime you have faster moving traffic going down through there when you have multi-link. Sometimes people like to drive a little bit faster as we all know. That has become a little bit of a hazard, so to speak, for the people that are using this area. We were tasked with coming up with some options and how to mitigate this issue that was identified by the city. Are you going to have two independent left-hand lanes there, or are they going to be one car with left-hand turn? It looks like we're going to have two. If we look here at this next slide, you'll we'll be able to see a little better than I can on this one. And if anybody needs any further information, I'd be glad to provide it to you. Mr. Bernard back there, but I'd like to pass on anything we've got. What we've done here is um, we've provided four options. Two options requiring more minimal work. That's where you're going into modifying the center median. Two other options you see down at the bottom of the page there. Those require a little bit more extensive design and effort, meaning right away acquisition and or land purchases. Is TDOT involved in this project? TDOT is not involved in this project. This is considered to be city roadway. Is that correct, Mr. Bernard? Yeah, this is conceptual yes. only based on inquiry right. and Paul and they didn't speak to this so a traffic concern that came out of traffic data on the lead. Traffic. Uh, I can't believe that we're looking at this part right here and we're not concerning ourselves with going north and getting on AJ Highway off Liberty. Uh, if you've ever come from uh, Food City area up, up going north on Liberty Hill and turn to the right to go toward Ingalls, it is very, very difficult to get on AJ Highway. You, you almost have to come to a complete stop to be able to look back and see if other cars are coming. Sure. That's a very good point that you bring up there. And I thought that was part of the project. I thought that would be part of this too. Uh, the original complaint that came in from the traffic team was the concern of people going west and making the left into the Bible, church, uh, Bible insurance and the church property that the cars were coming up on them uh, and uh, you know it's, it's 
safety concern. So that that's where this uh, uh, project began, if you will, from that original uh, comment, the traffic thing. But for sure, we can add that to the project and see about extending the length of that yield lane up. Uh, I think the biggest I think the biggest concern there is that's uh, the bunch, the Bibles and the labels. The access that, that Tommy's talking about is a twenty four seven. That's situation. exactly right. It's and far more it's far more dangerous to pull on AJ Highway than it is to pull back into uh, a new access to Bible insurance or to go across to Paul Bell storage buildings. But I understand those. Are, are you saying that if somebody's coming out of that Food City and Pals and Pizza Hut and all that and they want to go east, they're going to Liberty Hill to get on East AJ instead of just going up and taking a left on yes. Morris Boulevard? Yes, certainly. Yes. And please give and why me why would you think? Why would you think Link uh, Credit Union would, uh, I mean, down there on that corner, that's a major Major thoroughfare where where, uh, where the credit union is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they wouldn't have made a design. They wouldn't have made a study to see that that was a great place to put that there if it wasn't the fact that there's a lot of traffic. Okay, I, I guess my first blush would be if you're going to head east, you get up on Morris Boulevard. But uh, I mean, East AJ has got a lot of traffic too. I, understand. I just haven't thought of it that way. And keep in mind the traffic. I, I, I totally understand why yeah. that's being done like it is. And keep in mind, too, that this is a very preliminary study. There's, like I say, down at the, the second point down there, the next step would be to do an actual traffic study where we would go out, lay traffic counters across the road, we would count all that traffic in. Well, I do agree hours. there needs to be a lot like this section down here. I like this part. You talked about concept three or four. Con concept four. Uh, there is there there is a need for a lot right there, but that's something that would require a little bit more right away and or land acquisition. But if it is determined through traffic counts and design process, that that's the safest and best alternative. That's that what drives that? Traffic sure counts. Traffic count traffic. Drive there. There's there's all. I wish I could speak a little bit more to what our traffic engineers do. I'm just sound ignorant if I did. But what I can tell you they, they, they do is they take these traffic counts and they've got different design standards they use for projected growth in the area, other factors that are involved, like stopping site distances, speeds, projected future speeds. Many different variables go into what we would have as a final design on this. The traffic team strictly just wanted us to come up with some basic generalized concepts that would address the situation. So, mm -hmm. You have to forgive them or us for this isn't a, a real final design here. I just want to make that clear. Discuss this. I'd like to add on, just to clarify, on that eastbound on ramp on Liberty Hill Road off, off uh, on the AJ Highway from Liberty Hill Road, that on ramp is too short and it creates two problems. It doesn't give the person coming on long enough to find that space right. to come in right. and the traffic that's already on the AJ Highway is so short that they don't have an opportunity to move over uh, so there's a lot of uh, contention there for space. I live just a few block, two blocks from there and I go that road just about every day and obviously not every time I come up there but many times there's someone coming on and you're right there together and they, they have to stop can't come on and they can't speed, they don't have enough room to speed up. So we ought to look at that. That's very good input, and that's the exact type of input that we see through all the users of the area during this process. And I think there's space to, to make that. You better have a run of time. I think, you know, I'm, not I'm sure just saying the traffic to study people should realize that. <laughs> I don't know if the church entrance is too, too close to that. But Sir, to your, to your point up there, I don't, I don't believe at this point there's been an official traffic study completed on this. Like I said, it was just a preliminary alternative study. That would be the next step, would be the traffic study.
site well, going well. It started off a little bit slow with personnel and just people getting, getting things moving. They do have some good personnel out there. We're going to stick around and have good supervisors out there on site. And we're really happy with the way the production's going right now. Central Church Road Improvements, that one, like I said, we just submitted preliminary plans. Next step now, since we've got the alignment established, to go out and do some more geotechnical investigation, finalize it. Same thing with the multimodal slash sidewalk project. We're going to move forward with that one. These preliminary plans. We do have alignment that the city is in agreement with now. So we will do a small geotechnical investigation along this corridor that we propose. And that will give us a better idea of what we need to do to construct that. We do intend to have these bulk projects out for bid around the same time. I hope that that will provide us a better end scenario. Similar type work being constructed in a similar area. That's a big benefit for us. Liberty Hill Road and Andrew Johnson Highway intersection alternatives. I think we discussed that very really well here. I'd be glad to discuss it more if I do have more than so If there's anything else we can talk about, I'd be glad to do it. That one has some future stages that need to happen before, of course, a more solid design would be selected for that. That's why we were real careful to have the disclaimer that these are an alternative study is a lot different than a traffic study in the design. May I ask about your multimodal? Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, where does your project start and the one that's taking place on North Boulevard? I mean, are, are they you're totally separate projects? Yes. And yes. This, this, your project is funded by the city of Morristown sidewalk mm -hmm. fund? No, this is funded by TDOT local programs. Here, tell me exactly geographically where we are in the city that you're putting in these sidewalks. Are you able to see that of the contours? The contours kind of make it a little bit complicated to be able to see that route today, but our route is that green highlighted line that you're going to ride along the edge of Andrew Johnson. You see where it crosses the so you're all on HA and the other one is the state student Morris. Correct. How do you decide whether or not, because there have been debates um, over time as to whether or not the sidewalk comes all the way up the curb of the street or if there's a green no man land, you know, between the sidewalk and the street. That's a very good question. I, I believe uh, I'm, I might have to defer to some of the city folks to that determination of what's been, what's been determined there. The way that would you like to address yeah, that? So uh, we met recently with the uh, engineers, and most of that area, there's enough right of way to the sidewalk where you do have that green strip in there. Um, usually when that's not done, it's when the right of way is so narrow where there's other conflicts that they're right. Well, that's a big debate that we have about who's going to maintain that. If you look at Morris Boulevard right now, we have a brand new sidewalk and we have grass growing up in it, and that's going to lessen the life of that sidewalk because we can't keep our, we don't have the manpower to do the curves because they were short. It's not because we're not trying to do it. I'm going right. to say that all. I'm not digging you or digging you, okay? But uh, it's a possibility because I know when they did the one in front of these times many years ago, there was a debate. I said, take, make the sidewalk wider, take it all the way to the curb. Nobody's going to do that except some places do it. In, in various businesses. So, is that a possibility? Um, on part of that project, I don't know because it's, it's, it's different the way the state wants you to be so far away off the lot line. Uh, on the other end, next to the College Square Mall, we're going to put it right up against the curb, match on the other side of the street right now, it's all the way up against the curb. So, it's very, variations to have on this situation. Did you know, Michael, the, um, First thing I was told is safety. That green space provides a buffer between the pedestrian and oncoming traffic. So if you so if you go down North Boulevard in front of some, uh, you know, out here, uh, no man's the rock tile is. <coughs> you can't get this in like you know, across from uh, there. Early. Early. It is there is no green space. It's very narrow sidewalks. So two people cannot walk side by side safely. So um, I really think that I mean, if, if safety is the issue, we're putting it 
up against the current, you need to widen the sidewalk. Serious, I mean, that, that's what I've always been told. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't answer to the safety part of it <laughs> as far as it being up there because the, I mean, the state's the one that put that one in. Uh, we didn't really have a lot to do with that. Uh, so. and, and you're not going to solve the thing, you know that, but if, if safety's the issue, then why are we digging that? You know, some places we put the green and nobody maintains it. Some people maintain it. Uh, and you've got the safety issue. I don't know. Thank you. Just to clarify a little bit. Let me ask you, on that, that Merchant's Green, it says the Sunset Hill. Um, <coughs> Merchant's Green, I know it's in front of, I guess it's in front of Aldis and Chili's. There's no sidewalk there. And there's no bill. But, um, but on out west, where there's not a building yet, there is a sidewalk. I know that. I think, and Steve, maybe you remember, the sidewalk through that, that part of uh, that development where all these is leaves the, the highway but goes through the development. So you can still walk through, but you got to go through the, the road frontage, yeah. not right on the highway. Okay. So that's sort of a U shape. I, I just noticed that the other day. I thought, I wonder why there's I couldn't remember. Jason to come and kind of present because a lot of these projects take many years of drawing, development, permit approval, and design to get off to fruition. We've got a lot going on. I just want to let you be aware of what Jason and his team is doing, kind of keep you up to speed on some of the things that are happening because you don't see them on a regular basis. They're working hard with staff people trying to make sure things happen, happen quickly and, and get a quality project. So, any other questions or comments for Jason? I thank everybody for allowing me to talk and update you on the projects we work on. I am grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. All right. While we're changing up, we're going to bring up the the closing team with the, with the, our, our local staff. If y'all want to go ahead and get set up, we're going to talk about the uh, some other locally managed projects, some additional uh, transportation projects, trying to get the, get this going so we can meet our schedules and, and stay on schedule getting out of here by noon because I understand from that end of the table that it's important to get out of the room at least much well. So, all right, guys, we're going to turn it over to the Larry and the boys. Joey, you're not up there? He's just in to throw things. Lake Moore subdivision, 
the Wiggles at 25E in Cherokee Park. And so Bryce Pike Bridge is going to be right, right there. That gives you a reference point. TDOT biannually inspects the bridges in the state of Tennessee. Currently, city of Morristown, there are 18 bridges that TDOT inspects. Now, a lot of times you'll think of the bridge as the big structural span, but uh, some of these bridges are where Calvary uh, Road is, Dye Street, and it's just the, the big culverts that, that, uh, that we have. Anything that's over 20 feet is 20 feet or longer is considered a bridge. And then the uh, bridges that have been recently rehabbed, if you remember, we, we did the West 2nd North bridge right outside of the city center, actually the yeah, West 2nd North and then South Henry near Sunrise. We did those two uh, two or three years ago. Price Pike Bridge was uh, estimated built around 1940, so now it has come up as there are several criteria, so TDOT has rated that bridge poor condition and <coughs> that allows us then to uh, for a grant, and in 2019, it was rated poor. City Council approved the pro project in 2019, and we applied for the Improve Act. This is 100% money from the state, and LDA was chosen as the consultant for the project. Now, the way the, that uh, that runs is you select the consultant, and the uh, consultant has a preliminary design and then uh, you go into different phases and so one of the goals that we had on this one was to improve the alignment and also uh, to widen the road because it is a one lane bridge uh, two cars cannot meet at that bridge at the same time here is a look uh, looking north on Bryce Pike and you will see the bridge is right in here. Uh, it is one lane, very narrow, and if you meet a car, you're going to have to wait. So the top picture is the preliminary design. The old bridge, or the existing bridge, is right here, and it basically runs this direction. So with the new alignment, we're straightening it out a little bit where you can see and also that we're widening the road so that you'll have an actual two lane. The lower left hand picture is the existing bridge that is out there and it's uh, basically a single box culvert and the proposed design is would be putting in uh, two box culverts. <clears throat> so the process for this is you go to preliminary design, which was the current drawing that you saw. Then you go into the, the NEPA phase, which is environmental study. Uh, think snail gardens and maps. And then once you get approved with the NEPA study, then you go into the, the design phase. This particular project, straightening out, will require uh, purchasing right away to, to do that straightening out. So, we would then go into the right-of-way phase and then once the right-of-way is purchased and we're out of that phase, we go into the construction phase. Now the Improved Act, uh, the monies and the way that's done is generally about a year shorter than local program uh, type money. So we're looking at a, a two-year uh, lifespan for going from preliminary design to construction. Now, the one thing that we've been told by TDOT to put on our radar, if you remember back in the mid-60s, uh, when downtown used to flood, uh, I believe Barnes Wagner was the, con the uh, consultant they came in and uh, channelized Turkey Creek. And TDOT has, on the inspection report, it's rated fair, but they have also <coughs> told us that by the time the 2021 inspection comes around more than likely that's going to be on the poor and the reason they, they that it's going to be 
added to the core condition is some of the beams, concrete beams have spalding and, and is exposing some of the rebar. So that is something that we'll need to be putting on our radar for uh, the 2021 and getting it on. And hopefully maybe we get to improve that ground on that one also. That's no guarantee, but that needs to be on our radar. Are you talking about the area that comes out of uh, Main Street? Talking about the uh, channelization under Main Street <clears throat> and the deep channel that goes across the side of the city. Is that? Yes. Okay. Are you not really yes. smart that comes under Main Street? Yes. It it goes under. It starts to go under behind the uh, Sonic Lodge in that particular area. It goes underground there and then comes out uh, before you get to West Person North Street. That channel I've heard is tall enough that a person can stand up in it. Oh yes, you can walk. You can walk through. So, so that whole thing would be rehab. Yes. <laughs> so a lot of that have to walk with. That goes down to the parking lot there behind the, on the south side of the store. You know, that it does. Uh, I don't have a picture. Really don't have a picture to go, but if you if you can imagine starting at the Sonic Lodge, where, where the Sonic Lodge is behind that at Mill and, and West Main Street. You remember the old rail bed uh, that used to come off of that to go north, just on the other side of that. Uh, it's a picture coming off the rail bed and then going between East Tennessee Diamond, that alleyway. The old urban Yes, 1965. And who pays for this one? T Dog's paying for the Brock's Pike, and then hopefully we can get a, a grant over the end through it. But that, that's, that would be the approach. You say rehab it, what do you call it? At this time, I don't know. I don't know if it means just replacing the beams that are spalling or if they want to go in and, and replace much more than that. That would be, uh, uh, be up to the design engineer. I don't know who the contractor was. Do you remember? No. No bars was the designer. What would they do? They, would they, they can't shore up the concrete. Would you replace it or support that, it? That would be up to the uh, the engineer to decide what needs to be done. I see that we're doing, uh, we did, tell me what's the name of your um, bridge there, Vantage View Bridge. And we're putting, um, what kind of pipe do they have? Plastic, looks like pipe that we're using in lots of places. Black plastic. Black plastic. HDPE. Right. What's the lifespan on that? hundred years. Because what was happening there was that metal. Um, the corrugated metal. Corrugated metal. So that wouldn't be what they would need. You don't know. It's the, the existing channel under there is concrete. Uh, so it's like we would have to possibly reinforce the whole thing. That's going to be up to the, the engineers that inspection report list three beams. So uh, it could be just three different spots. So we would have sinkholes potentially. No, no, we're no. we're talking about the overhead beams. But the, the challenge with this one is where it is. It's, it's under Main Street. The volume of water is very significant. You're going to have to make sure you got an adequate pass through for the volume of water. It'll be a complicated project. And we're going to have to do a really good job of begging the state to help pay for that. I guess what I'm asking, Tony, is if you don't do anything, is it going to fall in? Eventually, if you stand by and watch it, it will fall in. The state inspects it on every other year. They'll give us a report, and they'll continue to uh, uh, to monitor it. If it becomes unsafe, they will close it. Okay, if we're doing all that work on the back side, on the north side of downtown, we certainly don't want to have this happen. You could have something that's listed as poor condition for several years. If it continues to deteriorate, then the state's going to close it and condemn it. 
but you can have some that just you see a lot of old cars. They're not necessarily unsafe, but obviously they're not as good a shape as a brand new car. But they're still functioning as a, an appropriate automobile, but sooner or later, if a particular event happens on a car, you So, so Turkey Creek's on the radar. We'll brief you on it. It's coming, but, but we need to keep rolling for the presentation of the state of the state. Thank you, Bob. Uh, next is the West AJ waters to this curve. Um, as Paul just mentioned, Main Golden Bridge is, uh, is a bit totally different program than what the uh, road program is with PDOT. So the bridge is a lot simpler and easier to go through the process than like this. And you'll we'll get to see why here in just a second. For those who remember, I took, went back in history and went, uh, found one of the approvals that we did on the project. So uh, September 15th, this is how far this goes back uh, uh, for uh, uh, one of the approvals made by council to begin the project. Uh, of course, the goal was to enhance traffic, traffic signal economy and, and AJ uh, rehab stormwater infrastructure uh, and uh, sidewalks and uh, resurfacing. Uh, another goal is to try to address the pavement, what I call wash, uh, washboarding there in the S-curve for those who seen the pavement kind of split and that sort of thing. Uh, that's another goal for the project, try to alleviate that with the pressures of the heavy trucks and stuff traveling on that portion of the road, making those turns. Um, normally these projects, as Paul mentioned, is approximately three years, but uh, we've had various circumstances of this project, of why it's basically a five-year project today um, before uh, Bids. Uh, again, not anyone's fault, but the uh, right away took extra long. We basically the only piece of right away was probably a piece of land that was no more, was, the, was not bigger than probably half this room. But it took about six months with the property owner to go through the TDOT processes uh, to uh, uh, come to agreement on the right way. And that was at the tire store for their sign and two parking places. So, but it is what it is. So, uh, and then uh, we were able to, and this part of the uh, project we did go fast, uh, uh, that uh, we had coordinate there at the traffic signal at economy, all the utility uh, folks had lines overhead, had cable, phone, of course MUS, MUS fiber or MU um, fiber and electric. Uh, so, uh, we're able to coordinate that and all that work has been done to move those lines so that traffic signal can be enhanced. Again, the project starts here just short of the Walters Morris AJ intersection. It goes to the end of the S curve. Again, here's the economy intersection, and we will be made, uh, rehabbing some stormwater grates all throughout this. Uh, of course, uh, uh, making all ramps uh, ADA compliant uh, that uh, joins the street. Of course, we're having uh, sidewalks also. Uh, there is some major stormwater structures, might correct me if I'm wrong, here near Walgreens that will need to be looked at. Uh, they have a good idea of what they're looking at uh, to repair, but again, until you start digging, you don't know. So, uh, but that's, uh, that's basically an overview of the project. Here's the uh, picture of the existing uh, intersection at Economy and uh, AJ. You see here, this is the portion that we dealt with for with the free service tire store for almost six months. This little part here, uh, trucks, 18-wheeler trucks, uh, 
could not navigate this turn without going into her landscaping. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, that was purchased to widen that intersection to allow those trucks to make that right hand turn. You see no crosswalks here on three sides of the intersection. And of course, uh, in the, the traffic signals themselves are on line span or wire spans and uh, the pay heads or pay heads are no, no pay heads are current. This is what we want to do here. You see the crosswalks on all four sections of the road. You still have your left turn movements uh, uh, going in on, on, on those on each entry point into the intersection. Here is the new part. You can see this has been widened back from the old and give a little bit more better radius for those large vehicles to make that right hand turn going on this street here so uh, uh, you see mast arms we'll have mast arms pay heads for uh, uh, pedestrian movements uh, will be all uh, part of this intersection at the end of the project so this intersection will be enhanced greatly uh, at the end of the project uh, one thing uh, to remember on intersections and we ran into this uh, about two three years ago Another project, but TDOT, uh, one portion of, of TDOT, uh, ADA compliance, uh, that uh, any time you pay the intersection, you have to make all the ramps and uh, crosswalks all ADA compliant. That's not really a choice if you take TDOT money. So, uh, just for your information, this project, because of that, we will start a little bit short of, uh, of the Walters big intersection uh, since they had a state route, local route involved. Uh, whenever that part of the that in big intersection is ever done, uh, we'll probably have to meet with TDOT and that, that may be remaining that whole intersection to make everything work for pedestrians. So, uh, but that's not part of this project, and that's why when you see the project, it will stop a little short of. That Who gets to negotiate that with me? <laughs> I don't know. But we're not we're not going to stick our fingers in there and get burned, are we? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. I'm just glad that we've been, now that we've entered the fifth year of that three year project. But, you know, as I see in, in looking at their draft agenda and the money to start that's on the agenda Tuesday, right? Yes. What we're doing is the bid, the bid, we had two bids, bids came in favorable uh, underneath the projection by estimate by the engineer. Uh, money's been programmed, so money-wise we're, we're fine, both on the grant, the tip money, and also local match. So uh, to speed up the process, to bring it before council for your review and uh, uh, approval, if, if you will, and that will save us at least two weeks. Uh, TDOT still has it. There's no guarantee that TDOT will approve what's been submitted, even though we've complied with everything that they wanted us to comply with on, on the bid. So. I'd like the record to reflect that the mayor said, Hallelujah, baby. <laughs> so uh, but, uh, that is why that will be on your agenda coming up uh, next meeting to hopefully speed up at least two weeks of a five year. Walking apart. So, so your, yes. your last statement there means, um, and we had discussed the discussion before about making the intersection there sidewalk ADA. So, yes. is that what that means? You're going to yes. do the sidewalk ADA first. Yes. And I guess our, uh, my thoughts is sooner or later, PDOC will need to do something. And at, at that time, I'm sure they will reach out to us, and then, then that's when we will have that meeting on how that intersection will be addressed. So, so we're gonna, we just, but we have to go into our part. Yeah, we, we need to go ahead and do that part on Walker's. You, you know, while well, that pavement's starting to fail, uh, uh, so we need to go ahead and get that corrected. There, there is some stormwater issues that we won't get corrected to, and so that will take care of that. Uh, allow flow of water a little bit better than what currently is. Our so. business is taking trucks in there. Uh, it's the 
business behind, and I'm not sure what it is. Even though off the top of your head, you've got the, in that bread, bread back there. Yeah, the, the old flowers is back there, and the concrete plant also would yeah. use that intersection. So. More to turn than usually. Yeah, more yeah. to turn. So, I know we, we received multiple complaints from the free service tire store about trucks turning into their landscaping and that sort of thing and and uh, so that's Roger's trolling pulls trucks out of there too. Well so that's so much paper. Process that we use, we start out with uh, putting out for bid contract services for milling and paving with the contractor. Um, we do this on an annual basis. Our current contract has extensions where we can use it for two additional years if we wanted to, and we, we did. So our last our last bid was actually in the summer of 2017. So we'll have to do that again um, next spring or early summer to get um, somebody back on contract to continue at FY22. We assess all the city streets every two years. Um, and we do this using our phones out in the field. We have an app that was created by the GIS department. Um, this right here is what we actually see on our phone. There's a map and if you click on the actual line segment for the street that you're on, it'll pull up drop down menus and you can type in the of the road or the drivability there's different categories you can type that in uh, if it's if it has lines on the road you can type that in yes or no you can put the condition of that 
just down to date. Um, our last inspections were done in 2018, so we just recently started about a week ago um, doing the 2020 inspections. We also um, gather information from our public works crews, um, the patch crew, or any other crew that's out there that sees something that's not right. Um, so if we have a, a crew that's spending a lot of time doing maintenance on a street throughout the year, you know, they'll, they'll let me know and uh, we'll take a second look at that. So when, when all this information in the field is done on the phones, it actually automatically goes into the GIS app and updates it real time that day. And this is what we see. This is just a print of what we see, but all the streets are, are rated and color coded. So we can just look at it and kind of see which ones are bad. So the green ones are good. Um, I mean, the green ones are excellent. The, the good ones are colored yellow, and the fair ones are orange, and the poor ones are red. So the red sticks out. Um, so when you see the app, you can zoom in and out, so you can actually see exactly where you're at. Here, this is just a rock picture of the city limits. We also incorporate, incorporate complaints that we receive, so believe it or not, people do call in and complain about the road. And you know, everybody's road needs to be paid. I'm gonna feel on that too. Um, uh, we take the lowest ranked ones, so the red ones, uh, we take those every spring. I try to send a list out to all the utility providers, Atlas, Morristown Utilities, anybody that has utilities that's underground. Um, so they can look and, at what we're doing and give them a few months to, to go over that and review uh, what they have plans for that year. So if they've got a project where they know they're going to put a bunch of pipe in the ground, we don't want to pay for that street. Um, so then when we get the information back from them, we take a look at what, what we can do. Um, and we do a second evaluation on what we can do. So I'll go out and <clears throat> take another look at the street, see if, if which ones are actually need to be done out of the ones that are available to do. And we determine whether they need to be milled and overlaid or just overlaid. So if a street is uh, has curb and gutter on it, we really can't just overlay it. We need to take that top surface down and then put the asphalt back. If it's out where it doesn't have curb and gutter and it doesn't create any drainage issues, we want to keep as much asphalt as we can for the strength. Um, so we'll just overlay it as long as it doesn't cause any other issues with the drainage. Once that's done, we figure out the cost, the length, the width, um, what, what else we need to figure out, how much asphalt is going to be, determine that. <clears throat> then we work with the contractor once the budget is approved. So when the contractor, we send, I send him a list, it's got all the, how many tons it's going to need for each street, it's got a breakdown and everything's dropping. Um, anything that he's got a line for. Then he'll come down come to town, I'll go over every, every street with them, set the limits, start here, stop here, um, everything, answer any questions he has. And if he has to see something that I don't see, then I'll listen to what he has also and uh, try to make the, the best determination of what to do there. So this right here, after we go through that process, this is what we're doing in this current fiscal year. Some of these have already started, uh, but these all should be finished later this fall. I need their street page. Sure. <laughs> Any questions on that process? Who does the evaluation of the streets after they've been paved? The evaluation of afterwards? Yeah, you have to check off shit. It says it's, it's good to go. I usually do that. Yeah. How do we decide whether or not we put a white line down the middle? So if there was one there before, we put it back. So usually, unless we've changed the width of the roadway, we put everything back the it was. Can we do a bead down the side if there is a curb and gutter, gutter to do that asphalt? Is that, <coughs> is that something extra or is it? <coughs> I noticed that not all the streets have that bead gutter. You want to talk about the asphalt curb. Okay, so if, if it, right now when the contractor comes down, I ask them to put everything back exactly. If there's curb there, I want the curb put back. If there's a white line there, I want the white line put back. Um, 
Does that make sense? Does so therefore, like in appeals, we can go back and put in like a, there was not curb and gutter in one place, but okay. the lady was experiencing water problems, so we went back in and put the bead of I, I call it a bead. It's an as asphalt curb, is what it is. When we do that routinely, even on just somebody could call a day and say I've got a water issue. Um, I might go out and look at it, or Mitchell might go out and look at it. Um, Paul might go out and look at it. And if it, if it will help, um, we go ahead and do that with our regular crews. But on the asphalt part, as far as the contractor for paving, if there's a curb there now, I want them to put it back, just the way it was. How do we decide if that, you know, in some, some papers do a better job, it seems to me, but it's like icing a cake in the middle is the way I'm going to use it there. Where that, if they had to make two passes, how do you decide if that's acceptable? I mean, because sometimes they're not always even, you know, in the middle where the two. Um, I mean, if it's, if it's just a hair off, we're not going to do anything, but if it's noticeably bad, we're going to go back and fix it. I think it's a road I think probably very much is urban drive. It's up there as you come down of like John Dickens Cemetery and come down and cross, uh, you know, go across yeah, the house and go these hills. It's through a little, you know, residential area. Wow. But that road, I don't know, sometimes it seems like some areas the roads are not the same quality as the other as far as uh, that center smoothness. Right. Um, that's just, I mean, there's some bad places out there. I mean, it's, it's not perfect, but the um, if it's not, if it doesn't cause an issue, and it's just, as far as you're talking about the joint where they, they do one pass and then come back and tie it in, um, I mean, if it's if it's out, we'll, we'll make them fix it. If it's, if it's close, we'll just usually let it go. I mean, as far as quarter inch. What about, as you come out of the hills um, and you cross Morris, uh, to the railroad track. Okay. There's a terrible bump there. Who, who's responsible for those? I'm not sure who did that one. Um, I, I guess I'm I don't know if the railroad did that or. Quality control, I guess, uh, West First North in front of the, the Baptist Church is an example of where we had a problem. Yeah, yeah, we recently just paid West First North, as you know, earlier. <coughs> um, we noticed rather quickly, Tony noticed it, uh, and asked me about it. So I drove it, and it had kind of like an S curve, it had started shoving a little bit. And the road is it's tilted just a little bit to the right, to the passenger side. So when you come up to that first red light, for whatever reason, I don't know, but the right hand side of the tires, the tire line, it had started shoving right in front of the first Baptist. So it continually got worse for, I don't know, it just continually got worse. So I called the contractor and said, you had to come in here and look at this. And, and uh, if you did, I don't know if y'all noticed, but last week they came back on their dime and they, they did that whole lane up. Uh, so that was thousands of dollars they had to eat because something happened. I mean, something that happened correctly. Two of them. I might have several people to ask about that. Yeah. You know, before, but please see it fixed. Yeah, and yeah. it, it, it needs to be fixed. But that was on, because that's part of the quality. <laughs> that happened years ago in front of First Methodist Church across from us. That intersection, they didn't, the, the, the foundation, mm -hmm. because of the stocking, I think they had to go back to the concrete. Okay. Utility cut repair. So there's a lot of utility cuts all over town. It's been happening for years and years. And the roads that haven't got paved, it's even more noticeable. So I put some notes down on paper for y'all to look at. Um, and, a, and a little drawing I, I found um, that kind of shows what I'd like to do. Um, recommend the suggestions going forward. The contractor is required to provide any traffic control or directions as required by the MUTCD. Um, place all backfill other than full field in layers and compact the patches. So this would be for all utility companies that do any, any excavation in the road. So as you 
you can see here on this little diagram, another thing I would like to do uh, going forward is when they do the when they do the cut, whether it's a water line or gas line or whatever the cut is, when they fill fill it back up, I would like for them to also remove the top layer at least six inches outside of the trench. Um, what we can do here is instead of having a joint straight on top of the joint, it, it would allow some overlapping, which would make a smoother transition for your when you drive. Um, so basically, whatever size your, your, your trench is, go six inches or more, you can go foot it, you know, just something to get it outside of the outside of the trench line. Straight line cut that and then when you go to asphalt black, that joint of asphalt won't be sitting directly over top of that weak spot. All asphalt's plus in count. So whatever whatever's there it needs to be matched. If there's if there's six inches there, we need to put you know at least four and a half inches of base and an inch and a half of top. Um, so same asphalt, same depth. Any street resurfaced within the last five years required them to burn in the patches. So what that is is they you put the you put the patch down and then you, you heat it up, heat the old and the new up and roll it in to where it, it makes a smoother transition. All patchwork and related repairs should be the, are the responsibility of the entity, the utility company and or the contractor until the road is resurfaced. So if you do a patch and three years down the road it falls apart. I don't think it should be the city's responsibility for that patch. If the roads resurfaced ten years from now, you know, it should be ours. It shouldn't be in the utility company that patched ten years ago. So if it's if it's been any kind of thing or an entity, it doesn't have to be a utility provider. But anybody that does the patch, I think it should be their responsibility until we resurface the road. And that's just some notes for Discussion. So, does anybody have any questions on the utility cuts? The lot, the lot of the gas company. Uh, yeah, the lot, lot of everybody. So, are we currently mailing these companies when we do the repair? I have to further follow that. We do the repairs for Union West. the main problem when they do a, a repair in a street like that is they they just fill it back up and they don't compact the ground and when it settles the pavement and everything settles down that, that's one of the one of the major issues yes. is that being addressed that's what I, that's what i'd like to do yeah yeah i guess I think compact compacting the uh, the uh, the new hole Right. It's, it's to me, it's the key to the whole thing. And like you said, moving back. Yeah, I think it makes I think six lot. inches is very generous yeah, to the people. Yeah. They, you know, it could easily be more than that. Yeah. And we can, we can look at changing that. I mean, we'll try, try something and see if we need to adjust it. One of the things that you might want to look at, <clears throat> since we're having problems with people doing the compaction, <clears throat> is to require flowable fill basically concrete as the top layer so it doesn't set. If you do that, you have a much more reliable long-term patch. Is that a yes. fair assessment? Yes, mobile fields is, is the, best, the best ground to go. The only, the only issue with global field is the expense. Um, so if you got a hole that's out the road, I like global field personally myself. It's just uh, it's a little bit more money and time. Um, so. If you're in a major roadway, I'd probably go with global field would be my preference. If you're on another road, um, you know, global field's gonna be the best route. But when you do this, when you do that, you have to plate that road overnight. So you have to put a steel plate out there and let that set up, and then you gotta come back the next day, remove the plate, and then put the asphalt down. So it's a it's a time factor. But it costs them, not us. It, yeah, if it's if it's their hole, yes. It's right. not it's not our dollar. If we get a 
some kind of machine, a patch uh, repair machine or something a few years ago that was supposed to smooth smooth those patches out or something. It does for pot. I guess speaking as a utility, the guy who's working on the pipes, if we do flowable fill over a patch and then you have to come back later and address that pipe, how much of a pain is it to dig through that flowable fill to get down to the repair? Well, that's quite a bit. Quite a bit. But the, the process that we started a long time ago, it's much better for the city to do the patches and you to pay them because that's just because they don't have anything to complain about then, and, and they do it right. You know, you can, you can patch a good way or you can patch a bad way. It's just a matter of being laid in jail and not being laid you the deal right there, Maybe you'll think. Thank you. You think anybody else? I like this point about uh, doing the concrete. It's We spend a lot of taxpayers' money in seems like that's a complaint every year about having to redo those that patchwork. Yeah. King, King Street or Avenue, whatever it is, is a very good example. I mean, it's 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 a washboard going up through there. Well, that's where really city per se, we really did do not currently have a policy written down. So that's where just don't you know putting ideas out for your. Your folks uh, consideration uh, you know we can come back again and whatever changes y'all feel need to be made for sure uh, we can incorporate those in and uh, and then we can have something approved by you folks and then we have something in writing that way as we address each of these utility companies uh, then, then you know as they, they know what their requirements are before they make that first cut so well let me just say this the the uh situation that I was in before, they actually had to go back three feet on each side of the of the cut. And they had to put they had to put uh, concrete in there. They didn't like it. But they thought twice about having to do a cut again. Yeah. 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 No. So so yeah, so sure any of those need that type of information you know just let Tony know we we incorporate that in then we can come back later present some new folks uh, to, for approval sometime down the road. So. Well, we know that with all the push we had on sewer repairs, that cuts have been a big part of street condition. But we want to try and get this in front of you as a draft policy. We'll kick it around so we'll try and get something to stop. <clears throat> all right, I know we're up against time. But uh, again, I said earlier this morning, I want to talk for a minute about the idea of the utility of these settings. We've got touched, just got our toe in the water on street projects. We've got a, a slew of stormwater projects. Is there an interest in the group of trying to have another half day session sometime in the month of September, just doing what we've just done, going over project updates, giving you some details, giving you some background, and those sorts of things? When we, we find that trying to schedule those after a, a council meeting, we tend to be worn out by then and it's hard to get things scheduled and get into the depth. If you're interested in those kinds of things, we can schedule something in September or we can try and schedule them as we can throughout the course of the next several months. And then we already talked earlier this morning about trying to have a focus session with where we stand on the economy and the budget in, in December. We'll talk about that Tuesday. But is there interest in another half day session sometime in September focused on projects? Oh, 
Yes. Yes. All right, let me, again, what I'll try and do tomorrow night is uh, look at a calendar, float some ideas, get some, some things. So show up Tuesday with your calendars and, and your schedules about what will work and what doesn't work. I appreciate your, your time and, and, and attention. I know this, this takes up a, a lot of scheduling and gets in the way of doing other things. Hopefully you find it worthwhile and we'll continue trying to get things done. I want to thank uh, Dr. Mixa for the facility again and I'll, I'll send him a note on our behalf. Thank everybody that's kind of brought uh, information to the table. Anything else you want to chew on before we pack up and get out of here? Is he charging us for this room? Uh, All right, folks, thank you very much and we'll see you Tuesday.